Durst the worst. Durst the worst. Durst the worst. Oh, Durst the worst. Durst is the worst. Durst 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 the worst. How's it going, bro? How you doing? Uh, well, I would like for the state to reopen myself. How about you? There, you gotta get on the road, guys. Top school. Right, the road and the median. The road. <laughs> I would like for the state to reopen because it seems like there's a lot of working families who are struggling and the media certainly is not on their side. Honestly, I came by, I want to see what's up with people. I don't think this is necessary. The lockdown or the protest? Protest. Oh, okay. Do you, do you have sort of like a time when you'd like to reopen the state or what do you think? Yeah, how would you it's, handle things? In my mind, it's not about the time frame. It's about the number of cases that we have going on. And I know it's... It's really a nuance because you could say, you know, we could look at the number of cases in the state overall, or we'd be looking at the number of cases per county, per city. It really depends on how you look at things. Right. But the numbers, the numbers generally say, this is, I, I just don't like people going around and people are saying, oh, this is just the flu. I don't think it's the flu. I think it's worse than the flu. I don't have the exact numbers, so correct me if well, I'm wrong. I mean, no, it's all right. But we're, we're not going to hold I, you. But I believe, play. I believe what I've heard is that we've already passed the number of flu deaths from last year from coronavirus in the U.S. this year, despite all our measures to stop this. So, no, well, I agree with that, you. That speaks to that this is it. This is worse than the flu, and it's something we should be taking seriously. You know, I got, I got a single grandmother. I don't. You know, I don't want her passing away because she caught something. So I, I don't disagree with you completely, but it's it's the response. So I think coronavirus was a right or was a real threat, but I don't think the proper response was shutting everything down because now the food, the world uh, food program director is saying that over 120 million people globally in third world countries are going to starve because the food isn't going to be produced because of the economic shutdown. So the question is is there's no way they didn't know that before shutting things down. So what is the shutdown really about? Can you it, say the first part of that again? They, they said they, uh, the, the director of the World, uh, the World uh, Food Program came out and said that over 120 million people are going to probably starve due to economic shutdown as a result of coronavirus. And so there's no way that they didn't know that before shutting things down. So my question is, is if, they, if you think, uh, let's say, 40,000 Americans is a lot, uh, I understand that, and we should be uh, careful about our elderly and the people we love. But that at the same time, um, there's way worse things out there, way worse dangers than this flu. And I think that there's a lot of a fear element. In terms of medically, you mean? I, I think in general, just the fear element, the, the whole aspect of... Oh, no, I meant, like... People getting untreated, I mean, like, people can't get treated for other things, yeah, I've heard, yeah. I've, so I've hear, well, heard... Just, yeah, yeah, other medical industry issues they can't get in for. Suicides up because of economic depression. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of things that are factoring into this. Even during, uh, what was it, during the Great Depression, 22 people died for every 100,000, which, which that equates to quite a few people. So imagine, you got, it's, it's, it's the balance, uh, you know, at what point do you turn the lights on? We're not at Great Depression levels. Like, I get it. And I agree. I'm not... And I think this is a scenario where not everyone is wrong. I think everyone's kind of not right. My issue is with the people who are trying to make it a race war now. Just because it's... Who's, who's making it a race war? Uh, people are saying it's white privilege because they're, they're not oh. handing out tickets to uh, Caucasians. And I said that's all because of the sheriff. If you hire a rat or you elect a shitty sheriff, this is what's going to happen. I don't think David Clark would have uh, even handed out tickets, tickets the way today. What was that? No, not, not, not today. Not today. But it's interesting, man. No, I feel you. I feel you. There's a lot of medical concerns, too. Let's not forget the medical industry is all about money when it comes down to it. It's all about sure. we've dollars. We throw money at them. Uh, stimulus package, $2 trillion, I believe it was. Yeah, that's horrible, too. That, so, there we I go. Mean, that, that was both for medical. But, but, but that's what I'm saying. 
that's a, that's an untold story. The Federal Reserve now pinches the United States because we're even in debt to them even more, and inflation hasn't even hit yet. It's almost like the Fed is losing grip of global economics in China, in Italy, in all these other places around the world. Now all of a sudden, the Fed, which everyone was bitching about, is the answer. So I think it's interesting at the timing of the coronavirus. Uh, I guess, let me ask you this. Do you think it was uh, man-made or, or edited and or do you believe it's natural? I could buy the. I, I haven't looked enough into it. I've read stories yeah, about sure. the, the Wuhan lab and everything. So the person from Facebook used to work at the Wuhan lab, the one that used to uh, decide what is fake news and what isn't. <laughs> I've, I've heard. I've heard about the theory that it could have started in the Wuhan lab. I don't think it was genetically engineered on purpose to ever set out against the world or anything like that. I could buy that. interesting because a lot of the deep divers of journalists and people have done this for years they feel like in 2015 uh, we gave it to China and China through insertions edited it and now it's uh, come back to bite us in the butt but I guess we'll only find out uh, through you know back pages of newspapers and tabloids right <laughs> that's the way it is right shoot pages men in black well, it's CRISPR gene editing, right? The the virus. Well, to be able to look, you know, look at it and see if it's similar enough to this one that we could maybe at least hypothesize that it could have been edited. Well, the reason, why, was naturally the reason why they think that, though, is because the very first study on the virus that came back showed uh, biohacking insertions. And they said there's no peer-reviewed views, so they pulled it. It's still up there. You can look at it. But no one, no one peer-reviewed it, and there was no other studies done. And I just have an issue. So you're very scientific, but consensus science isn't very scientific. It's cost many lives throughout history. So the issue is, is just because consensus suggests something is it right, is it right. For example, uh, okay, here's a recent one. Monsanto GMO, your fact challenge, and you don't understand science if you think Monsanto glyphosate causes cancer, but now I can't turn on a TV channel without seeing a settlement. While independent peer reviews showed that it caused cancer alarming rate, they had thousands of peer reviewed studies done by Monsanto, paid for by Monsanto, to prove that it didn't cause cancer. Consensus, getting the consensus by the majority of the doctrine to prove something that's predetermined. Hence consensus science. For example, global warming would be consensus science because the science isn't settled. It's a consensus. That's what consensus science would be. You know what I'm saying? So it's very interesting. You know, so if the doctors say that the consensus, for example, doctors' favorite cigarette brand choice was, you know, Camel back in the day. The consensus is doctors think Camel's okay to smoke. Yeah. You know, it's kind of one of those, like, hoodwinks. So. Can, can I flip the question on you guys? Yeah, absolutely. What would you guys have happen right now? What would be the ideal situation for both of you? I think never shutting down would have been the smart thing to do, in my opinion. I think that this is economic warfare. I think that we've never been good with China. Uh, I think that's part of it. I think that globalism, global mafia state. Uh, when George Soros was at Davos in 2017, I got video of him talking about the global mafia state, his own words, global mafia state. So I think this is about medical tyranny and money and a power grab. Uh, Rockefeller is getting out of oil. I wonder if they're getting back into medical. That's where they started out selling snake oil, right? Yeah, right. So, you know, it's, it's I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I think there's a lot of globalism. Globalism in general as an ideology was a dying idea. But now all of a sudden coronavirus is out and it's all about globalism again. World Health Organization. World Food Program Director. I didn't vote for any of these guys to represent me. So, and last time I checked, Bill Gates doesn't have a degree. You know, he, he maybe identifies as being with a doctor and being a doctor, but he's not a doctor. You Dr. Know, Gates. Identifies, you know. That's yeah. his, uh, so your your ideal your ideal scenario would be what? I, I would say if you're under forty, let's say in the perfect world, if you're under forty, because nobody in Wisconsin under forty has died from coronavirus. Okay. 
I would say that if you're over 40, you should stay home. And if the, the, the emergency money should be there for you. But if you have the choice and you want to brave it, it's your choice. You can go work if the business wants to stay open. I think yeah. leave it to the people to decide. Every, the people everything dying, yeah. people are going to shut down. Everything market. short of shutting the entire uh, thing down, basically, and giving people tickets, it was what I would be in favor of. Social distancing, masks, washing your hands, maybe limiting, uh, you know, occupancy for businesses, uh, providing more masks, more soap, hand, hand sanitizer. Pandemic, maybe like, like that's just actually a point zero zero three percent. In California, I was point uh, of uh, actually uh, getting the virus. It was point yeah. zero zero three percent California. Uh, but uh, that's a lot of vegetation. Yeah, no, don't get me wrong. All the math, there's no accurate numbers, so that's half the problem. They said five million people are going to die of coronavirus. Where are we at? Uh, and why? And if it's scientific, yeah, why is it accurate? That's, that's science. Science is ever important. Yeah, but it's not very accurate science. Like, I, I could literally have done a shot in the dark and said, yeah, three million people. That would have been at more accurate, you know? So, I don't know. It's, they, uh, they have some sort of criteria to base it off. Well, that, obviously, what's that criteria? It's like global warming. You know, nobody knows the criteria. You're not allowed to. Obviously, they were off. Okay? Obviously, yeah. they were off. But, you know, we, at the very start, we didn't really know how viral this was going to be how deadly it's going to be, so they just kind of, I guess for, for better wording, yeah, they sort of took a shot in the dark. They said, worst case, worst case scenario that we're out there, because better to be safe than sorry. So anyways, my to answer your question, these old robber barons, they're all in the end of their life. All these Bilderberg group meters, the Bohemian Grovers, they're all at the end of their life. Henry Kessinger, George Soros, just lost Rockefeller. I think that they're going for Endgame. That's my opinion. I think they're going for all those about controlling the world and putting us in little like you and Agenda 21 little cramped housing to get us off natural resources so they can control the world that's what I think this is that's my opinion smart grids smart meters facial recognition it's all the stuff they wrote about that's what I think this is that's my opinion but if you ask me as a journalist I'm going to say I don't have full evidence to support any of that so I think you know that basically this is coronavirus and China is weaponizing it either to go after Africa in my opinion because they're moving the encroaching the Africa enlarging them at an encroachment or encroaching at a quick speed so if 120 million people in third world uh, countries are going to die due to starvation due to economic shutdown it's going to be Africa and guess who's buying up Africa right now China so if you because you can't tell me the world health organization didn't know that if you shut down the economy 120 million people might starve to death but you're going to but what, what's the trade off 40,000 lives in America to 120,000 starve because shut down. So the question is, is, should we have ever shut down? And I think the answer, my personally, is no. But uh, I guess we'll only be able to find out afterwards. You're the lady with the truck, right? right, right the dog right groomer. Yes, the dog. Yeah, that thing is loud. <laughs> Can I ask you one more question? Yeah, man. Have you ever heard of something called Hockham's Razor? Uh, what? Hock have you ever sort of heard of something called Hockham's Razor? Yep, no, I it? have. It's a psychological idea where... I like it this. basically it basically says the simplest explanation tends yeah. to be the most white people. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't like the turn of like, oh well maybe China was doing this to get land in Africa because in, until proven otherwise, I like to look at it and say, well the simplest explanation is probably either someone ate some shit food in China and it started going around or it got out of a lab. Those are the simple explanations. Yeah. The, the explanations that require a lot more evidence to throw into it and to support be something like, well, China's trying to gain land in Africa and is trying to economically attack the United States, which I'm not saying is impossible or anything. Like, it's, it's totally possible. So I, I, I like that you use that term in your statement on that. Like, as far as thought process, I, I get the easiest aspect, but that's the argument that was used during JFK, and most people don't believe it was a magic bullet anymore. I mean, one bullet that went through his head, down his shoulder, out his arm, and out his hand. You know, uh, the, it, the whole idea there was, it was the same idea as that, like, you have this general consensus that, you know, there could have been that many people involved because it take too many people to commit a conspiracy. But now we know that they've admitted to, because of the JFK files that were released by Donald Trump, that it was a CIA involved, and it was a guy dressed like a cop from the grassy knoll. So, uh, you know, it's pretty interesting. I don't think that was uh, that's what the CIA found in their research. I, I feel like that would have been, you know, national headlines literally never. I don't think so. Eh? The 20 redacted pieces. The CIA I think that uh, you didn't see Saudi Arabia on the headline when I found out that they were behind 9 11, did you? I mean, I was like. 20 
redacted pages that came out what 2016. So yeah, I was. It may have been before you're involved. I'm a little older. I was, I, I, was, I was five years old when 9/11 happened. Yes. 23. But you you get so so my point being is that like I get that the most easiest explanation may be yeah, going to go to the government. There isn't anything easy about it. Trying to file it. You know. So I don't know. I, I get that. I agree with you that there's a lot of yeah, it just is what it is. I'm not saying that's a factor or anything. Yeah. You know? No, it's a great point of view because but people like me like to jump to those conclusions it's, it's a, and irrationalize a little bit. It's, it's something I kind of like to stick by. As you should. I, I'm not not to discount anything. Well, I don't, I don't like to discount stuff or whatever, but with, without the proper evidence, I feel like the best explanation is the one that says I can say, if I take a soccer ball, if we who had planned it forever, I could say, oh, that was because Magic Pixies picked it up and flew it over there and yeah. set it down there, or I could say, oh, it was gravity. Like, one's, one's a simpler explanation. Right, yeah. obviously, I get that. To be the truth. Yeah, but once you've uh, started reading the quotes, you know, heads of the CIA and the state, which they said that their whole goal is to make everything questionable so that nobody knows what the truth is, I don't know. So, I, I, either way, it's... Coronavirus is definitely not a U.S. government. See, I think it came from the USA. I'm just telling you my opinion. But uh, because I think I think that uh, global scams, the snake oil salesman at a global scale, works because no one questions it because there's no way everyone will buy into it. So I think in an aspect that you want to sell vaccines and get everyone vaccinated, there's billions and billions and billions of dollars involved, and you can find people to kill people probably for under ten and grand. No, I mean criminal corporate entities and big pharma and things like that want to make money and they're using it to basically have a medical dictatorship over our health and uh, lock us down that way so that we'll need to have certain medical credentials to go to certain areas. That's exactly what they said. So uh, that's them verbatim. So to my opinion, that's a violation of all American. Like I said, in my opinion, this is the globalist all in. You know, I've read the books that they write. I've, I've seen the quotes. Uh, I think this is them trying because at the end of their life, things were dying. This is their last chance of globalism. But, man, I appreciate your opinion. Uh, elbow for you. <laughs> it's a rundown up, live, so check it out online. If you get bored, check out my group. Uh, uh, page. Yeah, we have, I've been doing news for 15 years independent. Uh, both unaffiliated. We hate Republicans and Democrats. Equal. We're unbiased. But there's things I lean to that are, like, I, like, I say, I'm conservative today. I don't have, I don't respect it. I'm liberal. If you want to smoke a doobie, smoke a doobie. Not, you shouldn't belong in jail for that, you know. Next to murderers and rapists. Just stop. Do whatever you want. Just don't violate anyone else's individual liberties or freedoms. That's real. Liber libertarian. Yeah, I am libertarian. That would be correct. I'm more anarchist now, but I understand that's not a re uh, realistic expectation on a, a, a larger scale. Full in on it. Anarchism. A group of people, me and some other people, we kept on trying to explain to this girl, you know, it's full on anarchism cannot. It's like voluntarism, right? Can, what cannot, cannot work because I feel there's, there's a certain structure you gotta have. You gotta have some laws to keep people from going around and murdering each other without consequences. Or, or like, Stuff what are you gonna do for war? You need to figure out who's not. Well, you're gonna have a military, right? So, anarchy it's, in a sustainable environment. Anarchy, you wouldn't really even have a Only in small communities, I think it could work. Try, bitch!